I'm Chevy, and today let's discuss getting started in woodworking. Hello friends, welcome to the shed. It's Wednesday and boy, there's a hair. Did you guys respond to the sleep study video? Wow. On every social media platform I posted about it and here on YouTube, dozens of comments. That's awesome. Um, thank you guys for your knowledge about sleep apnea and your support. For what it's worth, I currently have no clue whether I have sleep apnea or not. I have to wait until the results are processed. But from some of the reading that I've studied, it's possible, maybe even probable, but like I don't wake up gasping for air at night. I don't fall asleep as soon as I'm awake. I'm not, I don't wake up tired uh, per se. So I, think, I don't know. Maybe I'm narcoleptic, who knows? But that's not the topic of discussion for today. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who responded to that video. Um, I really appreciate all the comments. So today I wanna to talk about the universal question and pretty much any hobby that you want to partake in and particularly woodworking, but the question that arises all the time is how do I get started in woodworking? And the answer is the same for any, any hobby. How do I get started in painting? How do I get started in drawing? How do I get started in race car driving? You just do it. That's how you get started in anything. You just do it. And getting started in woodworking doesn't have to be complex. It doesn't even have to be, uh, you don't even have to make anything per se. You don't have to have a wall of tools, hammers, nails, get some things and make a box or a bench or a... You don't have to build anything. You could just cut wood out and you're woodworking, okay? And so uh, one of the things that I suggest to everybody who uh, wants to practice any skill is you have to practice it, okay? And don't kid yourself Woodworking itself is a collection of skills, okay? You have to have the skills set to use a drill properly, to use a circular saw, a chop saw, a table saw, a jointer, a sander, proper sanding techniques, how to go through the grit. There's a lot of skill sets involved that combine to make woodworking, okay? So, in order to master all of those, or you're never gonna, well, I'm, people master them, but in order to be decent at any one of those things, you have to practice. Practice, practice, practice. You have to woodwork, essentially. And so one of the easiest, uh, best ways that you can go about it is to get yourself some cheap wood. Pine is cheap. Um, here I have a one by 12. This comes like in eight foot sections for probably 10 bucks or so, um, real thin, really inexpensive wood. Uh, you can also find, you know, a lot of the stuff that I make in my shop comes from just cutoffs. This is just a cutoff from some other project I worked on, or uh, my microphone stand is a cutoff from a piece of, uh, I don't know, uh, my fence project, I think. So starting with something like this and just cut it, just make a box, make cubes. Um, and one of the easiest ways to find inspiration for that sort of stuff is crafting. And crafting is something that in no matter where you live in this world, I guarantee you there are craft shows in your area that where people sell their handmade gifts. And yes, you're gonna find some really high-end stuff there. When you go, you'll find people that are selling these elaborate wreaths and um, crocheting and knitting and and all that stuff but there's a lot of woodcraft that can be made extremely inexpensively with basically one tool and that one tool is a bandsaw now it doesn't have to be a bandsaw um, you don't have to go buy a $400 machine to start cutting stuff out it could be a jigsaw and you can get a decent jigsaw for less than $100 it can be a scroll saw you're gonna to wanna to spend a little money to buy a better scroll saw, but any any type of saw that can make curved cuts is key. Because what you're going to do is you're going to make essentially shapes. Now my mom is a crafty person and she attends, well she has display tables at probably a dozen craft shows throughout the year. 
And so from time to time, she enlists me to make um, things for her. So for instance, this is some stuff my dad cut out. This is a heart um, that I'm going to shape up for him, and I need to duplicate these. Okay? Um, we got patterns in here. Here's a pattern for a Christmas tree that's cut out of a Cheerios box. I need to make her, she ordered five, so I've got to cut out five of this Christmas tree shape. Um, stars, okay? Like such, another one my dad cut out. This weird elongated heart that she uses for different things. Um, our state, people love to have their state uh, shape on things, so she'll paint our state. What else do I have in here? Another weird heart-shaped looking thing. Uh, gingerbread men. This is a fun one because it's all curves. There's no straight lines, so you can be a little bit artistic. But essentially what I'm getting at is get yourself a piece of wood like this. Lay out a bunch of shapes all over it. Trace them on here, and then cut them out. And just cut stuff. You know, and... I'm not even saying that you have to go figure out how to sell this stuff. You don't. I mean, it. Uh, I think like th these particular items here, she does for like a Christmas thing where she, there's three, there's a star, a heart, and a Christmas tree that are kind of hanging by some, what's that stuff called? Ribbon? <laughs> hanging by ribbon. And she'll paint these and then uh, what you, what she'll normally do, you know, with country style crafts is paint this and then scuff it up with some sandpaper to make it look old. Um, you're going to have to sell this stuff. Get some junk wood and just practice cutting out shapes. The gingerbread men, like I said, this is a really fun one to cut because it's all curves and you have to, you know, it'll help you develop the skill to use your bandsaw or your jigsaw to cut these tight radiuses, you know, uh, here and, and cut into corners like this and back out without making the saw chatter. Cutting out your state shape and, you know, make something. Pick a thing and make a bunch of it. Um, it doesn't have to even go to a craft show. You could give it away for Christmas, you know. Do your state shape with your initials on it or something for everybody to hang on their Christmas tree. It makes a great gift for somebody you don't necessarily buy something for. I was going to say care about, but, uh, um, but essentially you don't have to learn right off the bat how to build a table or a bookcase or anything important. You can just cut shapes out and um, get yourself using the tool over and over and over again until you become comfortable using that tool. So pick a saw, maybe get a sander, or just learn you know, hand sanding and go for it. If it is a, like a chop saw, maybe you got given a chop saw or a circular saw or a table saw, just make boxes. Make, you know, my project boxes up here. This is just five pieces of wood cut on a circular saw, it's nailed together. Make boxes to put stuff in. This is where I keep all of this is my electrical box, so I keep all my electrical stuff in here. Make straight cuts, nail it together. You have a box. You're now woodworking. The more you practice at it, the better you'll get. The better you get, the more you'll try interesting, crazy little techniques like finger joints, box joints, um, you know, miters, all that sort of stuff. So just play with it. Have fun. That's all I got today. It's Wednesday. I'm going to go play board games. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Thank you again for all the comments on yesterday's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on this video, especially if you have something to share with newbies who want to get into woodworking and who are going to check this video out. Please put that in the comments below. Don't forget Friday is community day. I've already got some submissions for content on Friday. Send me your pictures, your art, some videos. Uh, send me some random facts, whatever you want to send me. Chevy Dodd at thedailyshed.com or you can send us mail to hang up on the wall or just something for me to read and send you a postcard. Thank you guys for being here. I will see you tomorrow. Hey Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from usmint.gov. Why do they call it a penny? The British pound was not divided into hundred cents like our dollar, but its smallest part was called a penny. And that's why we are, why call, oh my god. And that's why we call our cent a penny today. But for more than one, the British called them pence, while ours are called pennies. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs>